Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures on what is a beautiful sunny morning here in Yorkshire and it's a very special day. It's a day where we can all sit back and relax here in the UK because it's a bank holiday so no one's at work. It's quite quiet. We've got a dawn chorus happening. It's quite early in the morning. The sun is belting down which is a good sign. It'll help everything grow and you know what? You feel far better just by seeing and feeling the heat from the sun. Absolutely amazing. Time to plant out, time to start covering, and time to take a serious look at how I can humanely get rid of the slugs. Because boy, oh boy, are they having fun here at my expense on Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. Well, I hope you will sit back, relax and enjoy today's show. Oh, don't forget your copper. Well, here I am down on the floor near my, uh, my peas. They've survived all sorts of weather. I've got some more peas here to go in next to it. I'm also going to sow sweet corn here next to the peas. And also, I've got some, well, unfortunately quite battered um, giant sunflowers. And I'm going to have a go, pop these in. Somehow, they've been attacked inside the greenhouse from slugs. Yet again, you see, I need to keep my eye on these slugs. Now, why am I companion planting? Well, it's a modification on the uh, Native American way of supporting different types of vegetables to help grow and put nutrients into the soil. Normally, they would have had squashes and um, beans and sweet corns together. The sweet corns, obviously, nice, tall, central steak for the others to grow up. But the combinedness, if we can use that word, of each plant gives different nutrients. And it works with all sorts of things. So I'm combining sweet corns here, as I say, and I've got my peas and I've got some sunflowers. Um, obviously sunflowers and the sweet corn again giving the stakes for the peas to grow up they'll each give different nutrients to the soil so it's really exciting i'm getting these now because well we've got some looking like uh slug invasion here too i'm not happy with the slugs at the moment as you can tell <laughs> we'll sort that out anyway oh gosh it's really warm here so when i get on with this uh well it's very very good news isn't it well, another job done, and uh, it does look rather extreme, doesn't it? It's uh, hidden in here are only six cauliflower plants. Yep, six, that's all I've managed to get through this year. But that's enough, it takes up a massive amount of space. I mean, even this probably when they get going, it's not big enough to hold the leaves. They're, um, well, almost two feet apart each and two feet square, so there's six here. But I've had to cover them because eventually, of course, our lovely friend, the cabbage white, will pop along and uh, suddenly these beauties will be absolutely covered with caterpillars and then you've lost a lot you can't do anything about it so always good to cover uh, this is alt for note again an old uh, cover that i've had lying around just some some bamboo canes and a few tie wraps now let's have an update while i'm here from sheila in west yorkshire now sheila uh, thanks for your comments and you've given us a out for now tip so let's do an out for now tip while i'm stood next to my canes Sheila said she does this, and a great idea. Um, she uses corks, drills a little hole down the middle and sticks a cork from a wine bottle on the end here to protect yourself from the sharp edges. Brilliant idea. But Sheila says, <laughs> and I love this idea, maybe I should start drinking more, darling, um, using champagne corks, because of course they've got a lovely rounded top. Drill through, pop them on the end, and you get some real good protection. I love that idea. Uh, Maybe I should start drinking champagne more often down on the allotment and ditch the tea. I'm not sure. I like my tea too much. And, uh, well, it's nice. Champagne every so often. A good tip, though, Sheila. Thank you ever so much for that. Great. And, uh, yes, so my um, cauliflowers are now covered. Fingers crossed. I've put some uh, fresh compost in the bottom of the holes to encourage growth and fresh compost on the surface so I'll sort of drag it down. I've done exactly the same thing with the sunflowers I've planted, the sweet corn and the new peas that have gone into a little square here and fingers crossed they all come up together 
and uh, well brilliant. I'll have to cut down all the weeds that are in front but the weeds actually they produce some beautiful little yellow flowers and uh, well here's a photograph it really does brighten up the garden and of course it attracts all the good pollinators into the garden because boy do we need them the next thing I'm going to cover are my strawberries because well I don't want those disappearing do I Whilst preparing the beds for the uh, cauliflowers, I dug up a couple of potatoes. These are from last year. These are the, uh, well, the uh, the blue ones that we had. I suppose they've been eaten and they've, they've rotted away, but they've produced leaves. Now, the reason I've dug these up is because they won't produce any potatoes at all. They just produce lots and lots of leaves and lots and lots of stems. I've dug these up and there's literally the old potatoes on the bottom. They're rotted away, but they're producing. So if you've got them, Get them out, don't let them go, don't let them waste space on the allotment. Let's pop those down there out of the way. <clears throat> I put some red cabbage into my covered greenhouse the, the other week and they've been doing quite nice actually until the other day. I started noticing that, well, they are starting to be eaten. And so I was down very early one morning and, uh, well, look at what I found lots and lots of baby, yes, baby slugs. So we're now going to start really looking at how we get rid of the slugs here. So I'm going to use my slug trap that I've made. I've got several of those knocking around, so we'll get some cheap beer. May even go into the house later and find some, uh, as I said earlier, some uh, yeast with some sugar and water and pop it in. Uh, and that will attract them. And I know, uh, Darren in Wakefield, you sent me a message about you've used that method on your allotment and it's really, really helped uh, almost instantly. Um, get rid of the slug attacks on your plants which is brilliant news there's another method that um, I used to use a lot I haven't used for a long long time and it may come to that I'm afraid using nematodes now if you've never used a nematode before it's germ warfare basically millions and millions of tiny tiny worms I say worms because the description I've got that and uh, you put it into water it's like it comes in powder form mix it in and then you, you sprinkle it all over the growing area I should have done it weeks ago because it does take time for it to work but it's like a biological warfare and they go down and, and they unfortunately will get rid of the slugs on my behalf i stopped using it but you know sometimes uh, it's been so wet here and so many slugs around that uh, it may be my defense i'm going to try the ways first of course you can use um, copper matting and you can buy this it's about five inches wide it's used for all different purposes actually five inches wide and you get it in six meter lengths and it's about 12 pounds or so and what you can do then is cut it and place it around your plant and the slugs and the snails don't like going across the top of it so i think i'm going to look at that i've never used it before i've used it man pots you know the copper tape that you can get quite successfully but to use it so actually six meters is quite a lot it's only five inches wide so it's not you can't lay it down as a, a whole mat this is a shame so if any manufacturers out there that there is copper can, can you do it like in a mat form you know maybe you know I don't know 24 inches wide two foot would be great absolutely great you can lay it down a bit like um the, the weed matting you get even a meter wide would cover a whole area and that'd be fantastic i know it would be expensive but wow we're going to have a go with that so we've got the slug designs there are slug pellets but please don't use them there are natural ones that you can actually use as well but the really heavy duty ones don't use those because if you've got anything in the garden that you really treasure like hedgehogs or even cats and all those things they can be affected if they eat them. In fact, on many cases, they will die. So please don't use that type of slug defense because it's not necessary. And, uh, you know, there are organic ways of doing it. You can get organic pellets that don't affect anything. But I'm going to get more tea down, more coffee grounds down, uh, more defense barriers, some more eggshells. Get those down. Although those little blighters that are crawling along the eggshells because they're a minute Funny, you think of slugs, don't you? Massive big things, great for teeth. Never think about the babies. Um, but I will from now on in. Anyway, I'll stop rabbiting on. It's been great here. I'm absolutely sweating, sat in this sunshine. I'm not complaining, though. It's a beautiful bank holiday here. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your bank holiday if you've got one, the time away from work. I know some people will be working. But hopefully, like me, you've been able to get out and do some pottering and, uh, well, enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you next time here on Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. I'm off now to have a cup of tea. Turn out for now.